having a relationship with yourself is the single most important relationship you can have as it guides you to how you show up in your other connections. I know I needed a lot of work to get to the point where I am today. I really had to date myself in order to get to know who I am and what I wanted in my life. I needed to be good with myself for myself in order for me to be okay with having someone else come into my life. And not only that, I needed to feel confident that I was also showing up authentically to those around me and to the people that I love. Showing up for yourself even in the smallest of ways really creates a domino effect of self-love, acceptance, and this new independence that maybe you didn't think was possible. I really hope this guide helps you fall in love with yourself and give yourself some sort of empowerment to show up authentically, to love yourself, to embrace everything that you are. I came up with five points that I thought were most important for me in order to really fall in love with myself and be able to know who I am to the core. Step one is self-reflection or journaling. I'm pretty sure you hear it everywhere, but this step truly is important for you to put those thoughts onto paper and be able to not dissect them so much, but really understand what is going on in your head. Solo dating just isn't about doing new things on your own or going to have a solo dinner. It truly is a journey of self-discovery and self-acceptance. The trust that all that you are is good enough, is amazing, all on your own. Journaling is something that I've done since I was a little girl. It isn't something new to me. I always had some sort of, I guess, diary, you can say. Not necessarily about secrets and things, but just about life or my feelings. And there was a chunk of time where I stopped journaling. I really wish I hadn't because this creates so much insight for you about your daily life, about how you're feeling, about your dreams, about your goals, about who you are essentially inside. And sometimes you don't know how to bring that out for yourself or to other people. On top of writing on paper, your thoughts, your feelings, those desires, it really can help you put your thoughts into order because sometimes we just have a jumbled mess up there and we need to get it out. Journaling is great for that. There is no right way to do it. Writing your feelings also allows you to look at it as a tangible source and reading what you think of can help you change your perspective a little bit, can also see what is going on in your mind at the moment. And for me, some of the most important things to self-discovery is asking yourself questions. Sometimes you don't ask yourself questions, you're just living day by day, or certain questions don't come up until let's say you're dating or your family and friends ask you what you're up to. More than that, people don't really get into the nitty gritty of who you are. You kind of just go on again, living day by day, um, everything becomes second nature. You don't stop to think about the things you really want in your life and what your life looks like now and how you want it to look like in the future. I will give you a few journal entries that can help you begin your journey into journaling. The first one is, what are my dreams? Ask yourself, what is it that you want out of your life? Now, some people don't have dreams and goals. These can be small ones. They can, these can also be part of your bucket list, something that you really want out of your life. The second question is, what am I passionate about? What brings you joy? What makes you want to wake up in the morning? What makes you want to do a certain something in your day, in your life? What really, really gives you energy to continue going throughout your day, throughout your week, your month, your whatever, whatever that is, write it down. Whatever you are passionate about, it can be something like music and break that down. Like what music, what does it make you feel? Why does it make you feel that way? The third one is what are two things I want out of my life? And this doesn't have to be again, a goal, a dream. It can be something as simple as working for a great company. One of the things that I want out of my life is obviously this platform. And that is to be able to reach thousands of women and help them become confident. That is one of the things that I really am passionate about. 
that is my dream that I want out of my life. And sometimes your dream, your passion, and what you want out of your life isn't necessarily correlated. They're very different things. But for me, they happen to be very similar and on the same wavelength. The fourth one is, what is one thing that I can do daily that brings me joy or could bring me joy? For me, something daily is meditation in the morning as soon as I wake up. That helps me so much. Deep breathing, even for 10 minutes, changes my mood immediately. So that is something that I do. If you like making your coffee in the morning and sometimes you decide to go to Starbucks before work, take that time, take that 10 minutes to make your latte in the morning, to make your coffee, to relax before you get to work. These questions allow you to know yourself better and knowing certain things about yourself helps you spend more time alone knowing that you have this confidence and joy within you and not putting that on other people or other things. Now that we've reflected a bit about who we are, what we want in our lives, the next one is getting to the fun part, which is planning a date for yourself. And the reason that you came here was to obviously date yourself. So let's go ahead and start with that. I am not kidding when I say that I have so much fun alone. I think that because I have such a creative mind, I'm also an artist and I was a makeup artist and there's other things that I do as well. I have enough thoughts in my head to keep me entertained. And not only that, I have other things that can keep me entertained as well. And they all have to do with my dreams, the things that I want, the things that I am, and all of those things allow me to have a fun time alone. I am never bored. And it took a while for me to get there, right? To sit in, in discomfort, to have quiet time alone, to only be with my thoughts, with no social media, etc. And I'm not saying you have to do that, but if you want to start knowing yourself, you have to learn to sit alone. <laughs> this helps you have a great time with other people because your conversations have now switched to, hey, how are you? What do you do? We you know, what are you working on? To maybe having conversations you never thought that you could have with the people around you, your circle. Dating myself really allows me to be grateful for my own energy and the energy that I can also give to others. It is something that you also have to choose, right? Like once you realize everything that you are and all the things that you bring to the table as a friend, as a sister, as yourself, as a human being, you get to choose what energy you want to spend on others as well. And sometimes you'll realize that spending time with yourself may end up being the better options. Let's reel it back into planning an actual date. Go to a restaurant that you like. I like to, when I plan a date, I really like to have a dinner at a nice place. <laughs> I'm not expecting you to have some fancy dinner date with yourself on a nightly basis. This is just for you to plan something really special for yourself because you deserve it. It's just as simple because you're alive, because you're here, because you really want to spend time with yourself, plan that date. The whole point here is to take yourself out on a special date, whether that's dinner, the movies, I know something I've always wanted to do is go to those places that, that does axe throwing. And I think it's because it's so far removed from my personality that I'm like, I would like to try that, you know? So try something new, even something you always wanted to do, try it by yourself. No one is paying attention to you. And I speak about this in another video I will link below. It's about dining alone that most people are not paying attention to what you're doing. You think that they are, but that's all in your head. Most people are into what they're doing. And even if they look their way, you think they have the time to just spend their focus on the fact that you're alone. No, not whatsoever. It can be liberating to know that you can spend time with yourself, quality time, fun time with yourself without waiting for someone to join in. And that in itself is super powerful to have that knowledge within yourself to know I am good alone. I can have a great time alone without 
anyone else's presence. And it's not because you're trying to be antisocial. The whole point of solo dating is to get to know yourself, to get to know what you accept, what you won't accept, what you love, what you don't love, what you want out of your life. So the next time that you want to go out, instead of calling your friends, instead of calling a coworker, put something on that you love, your favorite outfit, and just plan something for yourself. You won't regret it. The third step is to try something new. And I kind of spoke about this a couple of seconds ago that I really wanted to do ax throwing. Um, just try anything. You want to go to an art class, do that. You want to take pottery, do that. You want to go to a cooking class, do that. You want to go hiking for the first time, do that. You can try anything and you don't have to be good at it. You don't have to want to do it again. This is about trying new things for you to figure out and discover if you have any new interests, if there's something that maybe you thought you could never do and end up loving and you're good at, or even if you're not good at, you continue doing it because you love it so much. And remember, practice makes perfect in anything, whether you want to, I don't know, play tennis or do hair, do your makeup just for fun, like any of these things you can do. And don't expect to be good at, the, at them the first time. It's okay that you're completely lost. It's okay that maybe it's something that you never could imagine doing. This definitely can lead to you realizing that you have a new talent or a skill that you're good at or something that you want to be good at. I have always looked at it like this. I have always looked at it like this. Whether you like it or not, whether you're good at it or not, it is a story that is part of your life now and a memory that you have created with yourself. And maybe it's a story that you want to tell other people. It may be something funny or a moment of self-discovery. Regardless, it is something that is now part of your life that wasn't there before and that in itself should create excitement within you. So I really hope that you get out there and you try something new because I'm telling you, it will give you such confidence to do so and you will end up loving yourself more like hey i did that the fourth step is to create a self-care routine this is just based on your needs and nobody else's self-care looks completely different to every single person some people believe that it has to do with your mind only and your body and your soul which is fine. And then other people believe that it has to do with making yourself feel good, do things that make you happy, creating moments within your life. I am one of those people that believes in both. So I'm just going to give you a few examples of what that can look like and the things that I also do, because there are things that fall into both categories. Just do something that fulfills you that is completely non-negotiable. So for me, it's pretty much like a spa night every night. I make sure that I take time doing my skincare, which I love doing. And that is like a 10 step process, which I have done for maybe 20 years now. And I enjoy it. It calms me down. It relaxes my mind. I think of nothing else beside what is happening on my face, how it feels. And so if you have anything like this, if you have some some kind of spa like treatments in your home take the time to create that moment for yourself another thing that i do is meditation i do this early in the morning as soon as i wake up and i give myself 10 to 20 minutes to do that it completely changes me throughout my day it allows me to start my day off with positivity and a good mood and it really gives me a sense of empowerment and energy and I feel powerful because I have now elevated my mind into a totally different level before I even begin my day. So it definitely kickstarts my day. I also do it at night. It is more difficult at night because I have so many thoughts going and things that I want to do the following day. So I am a huge like note taker. 
so I can put all my thoughts on paper. We'll talk about this in another video um, that's coming up in a few days as well. Reading is another great option. You can uh, create a cozy corner or on your bed, have your tea, some candlelight, and just read a good book. I'm so glad to see that people are reading more nowadays because I was a huge reader when I was younger. I'm trying to get back into it. Um, I love reading. And if you have any book recommendations, please list them below of your reader because I would love to know what everyone's reading now. Another thing is to go to the gym or to have a workout session. And if you're too intimidated to go to the gym, then do some workouts at home. This can start out with stretching, walking in place, you know, jumping jacks, any of those things that can keep your body moving will really help you with your energy levels and eventually you will fall in love with one of the things and if exercise is not a thing for you and it, you don't like it there's nothing about it that calls your name it's fine like no one is making you be some like workout fiend you know i think it is important to know that part of being healthy is not just what you're eating, what you're consuming throughout your day. It is moving your body. It is knowing that your body is capable of so much. And again, you can do this in small ways, walking on the treadmill, running in place, uh, jumping jacks, um, using a jump rope, um, strength training, which I love, and just anything to get your body moving. 20 minutes a day, 10 minutes, anything that you can do also will help you so so much i also want to get my body in order as well so i'm in this journey with you if you have just started working out or you're an you know a newbie at working out i'm with you on that um, but this next thing is also calming to a lot of people and that is baking so if you like any pastries and things like that cupcakes do some baking throughout your week you know do that once a week or twice a week and you don't have to eat it all. You can give it out to other people, give it to your friends, family, coworkers, but just the action of baking, I know can be therapeutic for a lot of people. And this also can put you in a great mood, especially during the holidays. This is more about creating intentional moments with yourself. The fifth and final step is to go on an adventure. And this is my, actually my favorite step, honestly. This changed my life completely. Once I started solo traveling, changed my life. I am a sucker for a new adventure, trying a new thing, trying a new hobby, doing anything out of my comfort zone. I am fighting. I love it. I don't feel awkward ever. To me, that is one of the joys of life is discovering something completely new. I feel like it makes you feel like a kid again. So I really implore you to try something new, go out there, like go to drive to a new city. That's a great one go to a new area that you never go to in your city or in your state, take a hike. Any of those things that take you to your comfort zone can actually be so much fun. So for me, the major, major one is solo traveling. It fulfills a part of my soul that I never thought was possible. Once I started booking those solo trips, once I started doing staycations on my own, wow, I ended up falling in love with not only the places that I would go to, but the person that I am because I started becoming more well-rounded. One of the most fulfilling parts of solo travel is to be out of your comfort zone. But on top of that, realizing that you can take on so much more than you ever thought. Being in a new place or being in a place that does not speak your language, you rely solely on yourself when you're solo traveling or where you are going on a trip alone you have to figure things out when they're working out when they're not working out obviously if you have a huge emergency just make sure that you have a support system knowing where you are that can actually help you in some way because i've been there as well i went to paris and had my passport and everything stolen so in situations like that obviously they are different and unfortunately they do happen but this has allowed me to gain so much self-confidence and worth just knowing that i 
can do it. I can figure it out. And when you're in the position of having to figure it out, wow, you realize that you're capable of so much. So I hope that the next time you want to take a trip, you try going on your own, even if it's three hours away from where you live. Before I end this video, I just want you to celebrate who you are, the small wins, the big wins, anything, anything that you create, anything that you accomplish, just make sure that you're celebrating yourself, that you give yourself a little treat for accomplishing whatever it is. Any moment in your life that you feel proud of, you should celebrate in any way possible. And just remember that dating yourself is an act of self-love. And it's not about pushing others away. It's not about being antisocial. It's not about being selfish. It is about learning who you are completely and loving every aspect of who you are. So I hope this video helped you in some way. And if you have any comments or questions, please write them below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.